I think I have a little bit of a problem. So I needed to give a friend a pair of earphones around $50, but I ended up spending over $300 to get the top six best recommended headphones around that price point. So I could test them all and come up with the best one for the price. And of course, I did find it. If you want the short answer, the Soundcore Q20 is the best headphone here as far as value for money, but don't rush away to go buy this device yet as there are some reasons why you might not want to pick this headphone. In fact, I'm going to share with you guys the overall best, the best value for money and the one I personally would pick. Spoiler, it isn't the Soundcore Q20. Starting with the most comfortable pair of headphones here, I'll say that crown goes to the Skullcandy Hesh 2. The ear cuffs are really comfortable and the pattern at the top here feels really sturdy. And unlike the Q20 from Anchor, this doesn't clamp your hair like it wants to crush it over a long period of time. That's basically the way you feel after using the Anchor Soundcore Q20 after a long period of time. I love everything about the build quality and even the stitches you get on the ear cups on this pair of headphones. So as far as build quality, you wouldn't go amiss with the Skullcandy Hesh 2. Now my problem is, despite being the best in terms of the comfort here, this pair of headphones is actually the worst in terms of the audio quality you get from this legion of headphones on this table. And yet another thing I dislike about the Hesh 2 is the fact that you have a micro USB connector on this headphone. I mean, that's about it. You get this for $50. Now, who wants to sound like a muffled potato during phone calls? I'm going to talk about the microphones on these headphones and tell you which has the best sounding audio when making phone calls. Of course, as expected with Bluetooth headphones, you do not get the best sound quality for your microphones. That's pretty much a norm for this kind of headphones. But after hours of testing the microphones on these guys here, the best sounding audio comes from the Skullcandy Reef 2, this light one's here. And the worst microphones are from the Sony 510s and the JBL headphones. So in this order, from the best to worst, you have the Skullcandy Reef 2, the Sony 520s, I got them in two colors because I really liked this one, the Hesh 2 from Skullcandy, the Anchor Q20, the JBL, and then the 510s from Sony. These Skullcandy guys seem to do well in terms of the microphones. You guys should have a listen. This sound is being recorded using the mic on the Skullcandy Reef Wireless 2. This sound is being recorded using the mics on the Sony WHC-H520. This sound is being recorded using the mics on the Sony WHC-H510. The million dollar question is, which is the best pair of headphones here? And like I mentioned earlier, the Anchor Soundcore Lite Q20 is that pair of headphones you should get for around the price point that gives you the best value for money. And there are a couple of reasons why I say that. Starting with the sound quality, this gives you the best sounding audio from this bunch here. And you can actually use this to listen to a wide variety of music genres. Starting with that thumping bass for your hip hop, I mean, this is really, really good. It also gives you this large overlapping soft ear cups, which isolates you from the environment. And it takes it a step further to give you noise cancellation for a $48, $50 pair of wireless earphone. And that's something you're not going to find on this list. Noise cancellation for $50. Now, one thing I really think every pair of earphones should have is a wired connection. So you can easily connect this to a 3.5 millimeter jack port when you run out of battery. And of course, Anchor gives you this cord for that. You also get a playback time of 60 hours with noise cancellation turned off or 40 hours with that feature turned on. And if you're flat on battery, you can charge this for five minutes to get about five hours of playback time. That's simply amazing. There are also five buttons on the Q20s to control your noise cancellation, power, volume rockers, and play pause for the device. So five buttons, five minutes of charge to give you five hours of playback. It's a battle of fives at this point. <laughs> By the way, I have the affiliate links to all these headphones in the description box below. Now, as with most other tech devices out there, it also has its downsides. And some of those are things I don't want to put up with. For instance, this feels a little bit bulky for me and has this tight clamping force when compared to other headphones here except for the Hesh 2 from Skullcandy. And yet again, it has a micro USB 2.0 connection just like the Skullcandy here and other ones here have USB-C which is something I really mess with. So personally, which would I pick? Now the issues I have with the Q20s were addressed on the 520s from Sony. These ones here. 
These are so nice I had to buy twice so I could gift my friend one and have one to myself. The only features you miss out from the Q20s here would be not having noise cancellation and also not having a 3.5mm jack port to use a wired connection. These are really comfortable, feel really light, do not give you that clamping force like the Q20s and also you get a 50 hour playback time with this tiny boy here which sounds almost identical to the Q20s. Now this is second on the list in terms of the sound quality so I don't think you're going to miss out on a lot when it comes to the audio quality comparing these two devices. The Sony 520s go for $10 more so you're getting this for $60 while the overall best here as far as value for money here would be the Anker Q20s and these go for $50 so my personal pick would be the 520s. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys and do not forget to subscribe while at it. Cody that day.